Hey, it's Petra, and I'm going to try something different today. I am walking in one of my favorite forests, and I want to try posting a video from here onto my channel because I want to ground the channel. Um, the last couple of times that I have tried to do readings for to post on this channel, I've experienced a lot of interference um, all different levels I've experienced interference like actual interruptions like physical interruptions um, and I've also experienced a lot of just mental interference like I can't get a clear read and it reminded me of something that happens when you have turntables so I was I'm a DJ also and one of the things that I discovered when I first got my first turntables I discovered it by accident was the grounding wire what's called the grounding wire on turntables and what this is is a wire that completes the circuit uh, within the turntable and the electric impulse that is searching for the ground because electricity is always trying to go back to the ground um, it it kind of completes the circuit within the turntable and so that channel isn't going into the ground and what will happen if you don't have your grounding wire connected on turntables is that it will pick up a bunch of interference and I discovered this by like hearing like a radio station just randomly picked up on the, the speakers. And I was like, what the hell is that? Right. I'm like, oh, you have to plug the grounding wire in. You have to connect the grounding wire so it'll complete the loop. And so you don't pick up a bunch of random vibrations because what's happening in a, a turntable is the needle is super sensitive. It picks up vibrations and and then it amplifies them through the speakers so if you have an open channel it's really open and the sensitive needle can pick up vibrations in the building that are not on the record right and, and actually amplify those through the speakers so you you solve this problem by grounding the channel completing the circuit and this reminded me of what was going on with the YouTube channel and trying to do readings because it's exactly the same thing that I'm trying to do here. Um, I have a really sensitive needle, <laughs> right? I have a really sensitive instrument that picks up vibrations and then I am expanding those and translating them and making them, you know, broadcasting them so that other people can hear them. And so I felt like my channel needs to be grounded. Um, so I'm here in one of my favorite locations on the ground. And I'm just taking a walk and I figured I would post a video from this location on the ground as a way of connecting this channel, this YouTube channel, to the ground so that it's not picking up a bunch of interfering signals <laughs> we'll see if it works um i don't know this is an experiment just trying it because i was working with vibrations as a dj in one way and now i am working with them in a different way so i'm applying that principle from turntable wisdom <laughs> to the wisdom of channeling spiritual messages and broadcasting them on the internet. I always feel that really strongly. Like as soon as I turn a camera on or as soon as I start broadcasting, I can feel, you know, the change. Like I, like, you know, when you step in a body of water or you step into a room you can kind of feel how large it is by how it sounds, right? Like, you know, imagine you're blindfolded and you step into a big room that's empty. 
you'd probably be able to recognize that by the way the acoustics are versus a small space you'd also be able to recognize that um, same with like a body of water like you can kind of tell by the way the water is moving how deep it is right that's how I always feel about tapping into a network so tapping into like the internet <laughs> is wild because there's so much information and so much electricity that's connected so much information and messages being passed around so i'll try this and see how it goes i might get interrupted uh, my battery might die i might i don't know i might run into people and have to turn it off i might run out of storage on my phone who knows so who knows how long this will last but i'm just gonna post this video as a way of grounding my YouTube channel. This forest is eucalyptus trees. Um, they are not native to California, but they grow all over. They're an invasive species from Australia. And they were brought here for the railroads. They thought they were going to use them for railroad. Speaking of which, they thought they were going to use the wood for um, railroad ties. But it's such a fast growing tree that it didn't work. Um, they, they don't work for railroad ties. You can't use the lumber. It's such a f fast growing tree that it, it the wood isn't hard enough and it it bends uh, over time. It's not, it's not good for that. But by the time they realized that they couldn't use the lumber, they had already, you know, let them out into the wild and they started growing, invading the ecosystems. They're not good for the ecosystems here because they, it's, most plants have a hard time living underneath them. Although the bay trees seem to do just fine, the California bay, that these guys are the native trees here that are from here. These are their ecosystems, as well as the oak. These are, these are bay right here. And they just, they smell so amazing. It's kind of early in the season, actually. They don't smell that strong right now. It's early in the season, um, in the spring, so the leaves are all very young, so they don't have a lot of oils in them yet. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, there are people coming. I can avoid them. <laughs> oh, for gosh sakes. Sorry. Hello. Bye. <laughs> well, I was trying to avoid them and I 
came up right on me. <laughs> These are the mighty California Bay. They grow around the water source like this. They like to grow with their feet in the water. Okay, I think we gave them enough time. Enough of a head start. This is one of my favorite places in the whole world, this little walk. Everything is starting to get green. It's that time of year, Pisces season. We've had a decent amount of rain this year. That's always a big deal here in Northern California, how much rain we get in the winter. Because depending on how much rain in the winter depends on if we have a drought <laughs> for the rest of the year because we basically have the, that's our only rain. It doesn't really rain in the summer at all. So everything is starting to kind of emerge again. The green color gets really dry in the fall. Everything gets dried up. And then, as the rainy season comes, we get water in the creeks, and we get this green color growing on everything. Eucalyptus is an old one. Hello, hi. You're looking good today. And this bay is an old one. Hello. Hi, look at you, looking well, looking, looking beautiful, as always, as usual. Let me not bust my ass in the creek, okay? I'm trying to get a video. Oh, mosquitoes.
so forests and trees are one of my favorite magical places and one of my favorite ways to do protection magic. Because <laughs> when you walk through a forest, you're walking through the trees. And I don't mean just like, I don't know, like this one, like you could actually walk through the trunk which you could in this case. Um, no, I mean you're. I mean just walking on this earth. We're walking through the trees. They. I mean they are the earth. I think when we say when we say earth, the earth element, we really are talking about the realm that trees created. Uh, before trees, there wasn't really earth in the same way that we think of it. It was really kind of a ball of fire and a ball of water, right? It was this ball of liquid fire with this outer crust of, you know, elements that had hardened, but there wasn't soil like we know it. There wasn't any life forms above you know on ground all of the life was in the ocean right and then plants plants came up onto land from the water and what are trees like trees are plants but they're the kind of they're the kind of plant that has figured out how to live the longest Right, and they are able to live so long because they are able to construct these bodies that connect these light sources up here and the water sources underneath the surface. And they create these structures in between, right? The trunk, wood. That is actually the feature, if you're talking about classifying plants, it's wood that makes a tree different. It's this hard, central structure. And it's, you know, everybody, everybody's wood is different and has its different properties and they all differently do it, but there's this, that is the structure of a tree. It has this, ability to tap into the water sources underneath and tap into the light sources outside the planet within it goes deep within the planet and it goes above the planet and it's really tapping into those two source elements fire and water and it actually created what we know to be earth and air right there was no soil there was no atmosphere before trees. Well, I think there was probably some atmosphere from the plant life in the ocean, but it wasn't a significant enough atmosphere for other life forms to live. It was, you know, all of soil, what soil is, right? It's just dead plants and, um, right, mixed with the elements, and so, like the earth, you know, minerals, rocks. And it's the plants that break these down, and it's the plants' bodies um, that create the soil. And it's this, it's this harnessing of fire and water in order to create earth, what we know as earth, aka soil, and what we know as the element air, oxygen, breathable atmosphere. All, all other life forms on land exist within that 
um, cross, right? That cross section. The trees. The trees harness those two elements to create two more elements. And now we have the four elements here. And we're able to walk through these realms. I consider trees to be the original authors of this realm, of this planet, of this space that we're in. Um, humans, I mean, think about it. We live within trees. If you think about all the places you could possibly go in a human body where there are no trees, it's gonna be pretty rough. It'll be a journey. <laughs> you're probably going from somewhere with trees to another place with trees, right? If you're going on the ocean, if you're going in the air, if you're going across the desert, if you're going in the Arctic, right? All of these locations where there are no trees are pretty harsh. And humans can do it, but we, you know, we learn from trees about how to harness water sources, how to tap into water sources, how to get, how to get power sources from the sky, from the light, from the sunlight. Um, you know, I always think about that, like if you've ever been in Vegas or like Phoenix or in the middle of the desert, these big cities, um, you know, you're like, this is, we're cre creating these little realms with the buildings right they tap you know they use the energy to create the cool shade and it's just kind of mimicking what trees do in order to create a habitable space for humans i mean literally if you look at the evolution of the planet it's like the timeline is instant as soon as trees figure out how to do what they did that's when all other forms of life start multiplying um, on land, right? Within the ocean is a totally different story, <laughs> but land animals. And so I, I mean, to me, they're the only real authority. They're the only authority here in this realm and they experience everything that passes through them they're watching they're aware they live much longer than we do they watch multiple generations of humans pass through they they're watching <laughs> they're perceiving and they have a longer Not in the same way, way we are, obviously. Um, but everything that happens in this realm kind of happens within their parameters. And so why I say they're great for protection magic is that one of, what's one of the best ways to protect a space? What's one of the first things you wanna have to protect a space? Somebody watching out, right? A witness. Somebody who's watching, someone who's perceiving. Oh. <laughs> Close one. That's one of the first, most basic types of protection, right? It's a, a watchman. That's why people 
you know, say a, a dog is much more valuable than a weapon because the dog is listening, right? And the dog has better hearing than you. <laughs> That's why we get um, alarm systems and video cameras and um, neighborhood watch associations, right? It's that watchful presence. So if you're going to do something and you want someone to watch your back, go to the forest. Introduce yourself to the trees in your neighborhood. Because <laughs> if you're a human on this planet, even in big cities, there's going to be trees around. And oftentimes, we just kind of walk under them, through them, and don't really, you know, at least in the Western colonized world, which is where I'm at, you know, we walk past them and they perceive us, but <laughs> Cherries? Cherry tree? It's, trees are one of the easiest access <laughs> and most powerful spiritual protectors and allies. And if you build a relationship with the trees around you, spend time with them, acknowledge them, even if it's just with a touch, you know, people will look at you like you're crazy if you talk to the trees, I can tell you from personal experience. Um, so, but if you don't mind, <laughs> being a tree hugger, right, you can get a lot of, um, you can get a lot of energy working on your side, working in your favor, um, if you make friends and build a rapport with the trees around you, they, they're watching, regardless, and one of the best one of the best mechanisms for spiritual protection is to to have your allies watching over you one of the things that i do is i just come to the trees that I know are friendly with me and I have a relationship with, I just come to them and I ask them to just witness me, to just look at me. Um, you know how, you know how you just, you'll feel better or the energy will be moved if you you know, have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with someone and you feel understood or you feel seen. Working with trees is a great way to get that kind of support from the non-human world. Another thing that I do is I you know, actively ask them to watch over certain moments or um, projects that I'm doing or things that I want to heal. Um, you know, I'll ask for their assistance. By asking them to watch my back that keeps that keeps other 
energies or entities, it keeps them at bay. When you have a powerful entity like a tree watching over you. You know how if there's like a house with everybody knows there's a little old lady up on the, on the second floor and she's always there and nothing gets past her, right? That house, everybody leaves that house alone, you know? Or everybody leaves that whole block alone because they know she sees everything, right? So that's when you're dealing with spirits, when you're dealing with energies, when you're dealing with um, non-human dynamics, <laughs> right? If you want to cleanse your home or you want to cleanse your path or you want to cleanse your mind or your heart or these different spaces that are non-physical, Asking a tree to watch your back, enlisting a tree's assistance, in witnessing whatever's happening, brings in this presence. It's like bringing in an authority, <laughs> like an actual authority, like not like an authority figure. We have a 